Good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for coming out and being a part of this worship service. I want to introduce a gentleman. Whether he's here or not, I'm going to introduce him. One of the most beautiful threads through this concert that you'll hear will be the readings written by Mr. Donald Papielosh. Donald Papielosh. Are you here, Donald? Please stand up. Let's give him a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. These are taken from a collection of 14 poems under the title Redeemed by the Cross, a collection of 14 poems. And I became acquainted with them a week ago at a program at the First Congregational Church that celebrated the Stations of the Cross. If you're familiar with that, it is a beautiful way to celebrate Good Friday, Friday. We did it last week at First Congregation, but I introduced uh, these poems to some of my students, and they said, can we do this on our program? I said, let me ask. So thank you, Donald. I really appreciate it. So tonight's program, as, as reflective and as serious as it may seem at times, it, it is a program that celebrates the resurrection of Christ. We're doing it all in one program. Where a typical tenebrae service will start from light into dark, we're celebrating from darkness into light. So the resurrection will be celebrated in anticipation of the Christian holidays. But in particular, we do it tonight because we have already accepted the redemption and the salvation that has been offered through that particular gift of the Son of Jesus Christ, of uh, God. So I'd like to introduce to you Ravi Rainey. He's one of our graduating uh, Minister of Music, master's degree students, to have a word of prayer with us. Thank you. Will you please bow your heads? Our Father, we've come into this place to remember and to take another look at those last days and hours of Jesus' life on this earth. We have come into this place to sit quietly at the tomb and ponder and wonder and we've come into this place in order to rejoice because Christ is risen indeed. And we've come into this place on Friday evening at sundown to worship you as we begin this Sabbath day. I invite you to be with us. Fill each of us with your spirit. Draw near to us in a very, very special way. May you be honored and glorified above anything we can even begin to offer you. I pray these things in Jesus' beautiful name, and for his sake, amen. Jesus is condemned to death. It came to Claudia as she slept, a rioting mob a nation that wept. Worldly Claudia left Maritima to endure the bedlam of Passover in Jerusalem. Her ill-tempered Pontius was provoked by Caiaphas. As he let out a scream, Claudia remembered her dream. Pontius, I am begging. Please, let's return to our resort, to its calming sea breeze. Do not rule over a Jewish revolt. 
This man that Caiaphas brings to you, do not hear the case against the king of the Jews. But Pontius, nobility and royal status depends on the vagarity of the emperor Tiberius. To this Roman god is his soul's devotion to keep the castle of Herod his main motivation. I wash my hands, he utters under his breath. As his hands are dried, Pontius Pilate condemns Jesus to death.
Jesus carries his cross. It is just one more Roman indignity. Only the convicted can carry the tree. Over streets of cobblestone, Jesus carries his cross alone. Exiting out of the gate Ganath, Jesus stumbles toward his place of death. The distance is 800 yards or less. The loss of blood causes much distress. Jesus is on the verge of fainting. The exactor mortis cannot be left waiting. Jesus falls for the first time. Just 600 yards, just 600 yards. He walked all over Judea. Why can't he make it to Golgotha? Just 600 yards, just 600 yards. His lungs can't get any air. His back whipped completely bare. Just 600 yards, just 600 yards. Don't stop, the centurion calls. For the first time, Jesus falls.
Jesus meets his mother. For Mary, her life has gone full circle. Every event with Jesus involved the temple. Proclaimed at birth by the tribe of Asher, teaching at 12 in the house of the father. Rumors were that Jesus was in town. Mary had lost hope that he could be found. Mary and her clan traveled to the temple. Soldiers approached with a man, a notorious criminal. So battered and bruised was this man's face. Was he even a member of the human race? Mary, poor Mary, began to cry when Jesus whispered, Mother, it is I.
Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. Simon, my man, give me a hand. Walk with me until Calvary. Forget it, brother. It's too much bother. Ain't nothing for me up on Calvary. Look here, Simon. You know it ain't my plan. Looky here, Simon. Our life's in the Father's hand. Looks like you got Pilate's curse. Man, it couldn't get much worse. Besides, there's nothing in it for me if I help you all with that tree. Simon, from the beginning of time, it was known that we would find you here with me on our way to Calvary.
Jesus falls the second time. Just 300 yards, just 300 yards, comforted by the lady in blue, assisted by the African Jew, just 300 yards, just 300 yards, goaded on by the Quaternio, just 300 yards to go. Just 300 yards, just 300 yards. Keep moving, the centurion calls. For the second time, Jesus falls. The women of Jerusalem. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, I am black and lovely. Do not stare at me because I am so swarthy. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your progeny. O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, barren be your womb to see the Son of God placed within his tomb.
Jesus is nailed to the cross. Upon the cross, Jesus is nailed only hours before the Messiah was hailed. Could this man truly be the Savior? Oh, so fast he lost his favor. Braided thorns forced on his head, a lesser man would already be dead. To hang for hours on a tree, redemption for all eternity. To hang for hours on a tree, salvation for you and me. Jesus dies on the cross. Jesus falls the third time. Just 50 yards, just 50 yards, the crowd yells. You're almost there. Just 50 yards. Just 50 yards, the Passover pilgrims stop to stare. He's almost in the lion's lair. Just 50 yards. Just 50 yards. Catch him, the centurion calls. For the third time, Jesus falls. Bye. 
apologize for reading the text out of order. But we can afford to hear this again. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Upon the cross, Jesus is nailed. Only hours before the Messiah was hailed. Could this man truly be the Savior? Oh, so fast he lost his favor. Braided thorns forced on his head. A lesser man would already be dead. To hang for hours on a tree. Redemption for all eternity. To hang for hours on a tree. Salvation for you and me. Jesus dies on the cross. His mother and aunt are there to be seen with John the Beloved and Mary Magdalene. But where are the others? What happened to Thomas' proclamation to go to Jerusalem, to die bravely with him for all of salvation? So where are the others? And Peter, his rock, the earthly leader of his flock, by Peter, three times denied, where does he hide? And where are the others? Judas, the holder of the purse, his name now forever cursed. At least he doesn't hide, publicly dead by suicide. Tell me, tell me, where are the others? No mention of the remaining eight. No writings of treachery, nor stories of lies. Jesus calls to his father and prayerfully dies. Jesus is taken down from the cross. The family of Jesus' frantic plea, give us the body, give us the body. We need to put it in a burial gown before the sun is completely down. No, the body is staying. It serves as a warning. In a tomb it may be laying only after a full week's mourning. The Pharisee Nicodemus appeals to the prefect of Tiberias. The body must be buried before the Sabbath day. If not, the emperor's wrath may come your way. Regretfully, Pilate relents, so that no more trouble ferments. Pilate's prior order is stayed. Into Nicodemus' tomb, the body is laid. Jesus is laid in a tomb. Ancient Mosaic law they obey. The body must be buried while warm. No sustenance for the bird of prey, but solely for the worm. For it is written, only the earth shall atone for all the sins of those born. To Mary, the honor of closing his eyes, it shakes her soul. How hard she cries. Not to entomb is the greatest indignity. The sweet smell of spice adds to the misery. As they wash Jesus, they ask to be forgiven. The corpse is wrapped in simple white linen. A sorrowful dirge they sing. To the plot, the mourners bring Jesus and a scroll of the law. Tradition followed. There is no flaw. One more act remains alone. To the entrance is rolled the stone.
That Gloria was in anticipation of the stone being rolled away and Christ being resurrected. And so I read the resurrection. On the third day, before the first light, three women braved the treacherous night. Joanna, along with the mother of James and Mary Magdalene, slowly sauntered to where the nightmare did end. These heartbroken women wailed and discussed who will remove the great stone for us. The Roman guards were not quite awake. The ground trembled, buildings started to shake, the great stone rolled away from the door, the women trepidly entered the tomb of the Lord. Joanna and James's mother ran back into the night. So great was their fear of the dazzling sight. Two angels announced to Mary, do not be afraid. The Son of Man is coming to keep the promises he made. Alone with the angels remained Mary Magdalene to see the Son of Man return with the clouds of heaven. But Mary uncontrollably cries. She fails to realize that the Lord is right before her eyes. Mary, why are you weeping? They've taken my Lord, she said. The angels gently told her, your Lord is risen from the dead. Mary, why do you weep? Can't you see I no longer sleep? I am no longer with the dead. And I have returned to you instead. The Son of Man is seated at the throne of glory, sin and death defeated, his victory so holy.
this evening you were able to listen to a world premiere of the piece written by the gentleman that I asked to come down, that's Grant Steinweg, in case you didn't know why I invited him down. Uh, he was the composer of this particular piece. Grant, where's Grant? Come on up here for a second. I have a question to ask you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, because we're an academic institution and because we're a Christian institution, we can, we can do a lot of things that, that can involve the literal presence of God as in worship when we do performances such as this one. And I hope you understand that, that uh, the, the integration of, of creativity, as you've heard from Donald's uh, beautiful writings that we've read tonight, and the music you're hearing from, from many living composers. But here we have a living composer right here. Please tell us just a little bit, who did you write that piece for? There is a story behind that piece. Well, I was approached probably spring of last year, I think it was, right? By uh, Dr. Beverly Matico, now retired from the English department here at Andrews University. And she was thinking about wanting to commission a choral piece or some sort of vocal piece in honor of her father who had recently passed away five years ago, in, or ish. <laughs> and um, she wanted to incorporate some elements of what, what was meaningful to her about Kenneth Matiko, her father. Um, he loved the Psalms, um, he loved poetry and this text that you heard tonight is from the 1650 Scottish Metrical Psalter, which is a really the poetry, basically the psalm set in metrical form to rhyme. So you heard, such pity as a father hath unto his children dear, like pity shows the Lord to such as worship him in fear. So you hear that rhyme scheme, right? Um, so the, all of those psalms are set in a specific metrical form, and it was just convenient for me as a composer that I didn't have to go around rhyming my own words. <laughs> so um, the psalms were meaningful to her father, and so I chose that text to set the Lord is merciful and gracious and long-suffering and plenteous and mercy like a father is, like a good father is to his children. So that's just a little snippet of the story behind the piece. Thank you. It was a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. And because I would like the rest of the program to run unannounced and there will be no narrative, um, you'll notice that because we're an academic institution, we can also tie in certain protocols that normally would be reserved for, let's say, secular concerts. But Mr. Cyril Punai, who you've seen conduct already tonight, is gonna to wrap up our program in the last four numbers. And uh, he is uh, going to be shortly finishing his degree. And uh, he chose his music, he chose this music that he's conducting, it's been a wonderful, stimulating challenge, and the choir has had to learn a lot in a very short period of time. So do celebrate tonight in that we can worship and also celebrate a major marker in uh, Mr. Punai's uh, education career. But if he's like most of us professionals, his education will continue on going forever and ever and ever. So, I also wanted to introduce to you very quickly, if Mr. Um, Daniel Sushkov Serna, if you'll come down here, please, come on. <laughs> so we have another world premiere tonight. This gentleman wrote the song, His 
prayer. And it was particularly a collaboration between Daniel and Cyril. You want to say just a little about this? Uh, please. Um, so Cyril's a good friend of mine, and I love him dearly. And he uh, asked me to write a piece for his recital. And so it's called his prayer, and it is uh, the prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples, and um, it was meaningful to them, and it's also meaningful to us. So I hope you're blessed by that. Thank you. About one month ago, maybe six weeks ago, my colleague uh, Charles Reed introduced me to a set of three songs written by Mark Miller. We're gonna be doing one of them tonight. It is yet another text setting of the first piece we opened up this program with, um, even when he is silent. I believe in God even when he is silent. Mark Miller entitled this piece, I Believe, but it uses the same text, the text that was found in an underground tunnel leading to a cellar where several uh, families of Jews were hiding to avoid being killed during the Second World War. And on the walls were written, I believe in God even when he is silent. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. Those are the words. You might hear them and listen for them this time and hear them more profoundly than you did in the first opening number. Uh, we premiered these pieces here on campus with uh, Mr. Reed singing the solos. We are now going to be using one of his uh, protégés uh, to sing the solo part on I Believe. It's a very hopeful piece, even though it deals with issues that are dark, there is hope in the dark.
Mr. Daniel Serna.
such a humble guy. <laughs> I'm forcing him to do it. Thank you. Listen, Cyril has some things to say. Let's welcome Cyril to the meeting. Three years ago, a graduate recital video link was randomly sent to me, and the video showed a performance in this very place. After watching it, the idea of studying in the US came to mind, but I didn't know where to start. I didn't have the resources, I didn't know the process, but I vividly remember my prayer that night. Lord, if you want me to do something big, you have to do something big for me. Lord, if you want me to study at Andrews, you have to provide everything for me. I remember the moment I got accepted to the program, I was already looking forward to my graduation recital. To be more specific, the moment when I could thank the people that God provided to make the dream of studying at Andrews a reality. Of course, I didn't know them then, but now God has revealed them to me. This moment is very special to me because this is the time that I can tell all of you who are here tonight and the people watching online that this journey has never been about what I've accomplished, but it's all about what God has done for me. I want to take this opportunity to mention the people God has used to help me make it this far. The Andrews University Department of Music headed by our chair, Dr. Karen Thompson, for building a warm and loving environment in the music department. As an international student, I've always felt at home and accepted in our department. Not only are the professors excellent in what they teach, but they also go the extra mile to reach out to us and listen to our concerns. Dr. Thompson, Professor Reed, Dr. Graves, Dr. Keller, Dr. Elise, Professor Zork, Marcus, and the rest of the faculty and staff, thank you so much for your guidance and mentorship. The graduate music program director, Dr. Byron Graves. I believe many music graduate students wouldn't be here tonight without their hard work and excellent communication skills. Thank you for all you do for the department. You are very much appreciated. There's a lot more I want to say about you, but I don't think time will permit. And of course, my mentor, Professor Zork. Thank you for your patience and overwhelming passion in mentoring us, your students. You have not only been selfless in sharing your knowledge with us, but you have also shared your resources with us, to me personally. Moving around Michigan is challenging, as you all know, especially for those of us who don't have a means of transportation, but you have always offered your car when we needed a ride. There's a long list I want to thank you for. The rest of it will be announced when I pass the comprehensive exam. <laughs> Mrs. Zork, Mrs. Zort, thank you for inspiring us to be committed to this music ministry. Your presence alone at every rehearsal and appointment has influenced many of us in the choir. Thank you very much. To the university singers and chorale, thank you for the opportunity to grow with you all. You guys are the reason why I've enjoyed my four semesters of being the graduate assistant. You are some of the most talent people I've, talented people I've ever met in my life. I love you all. I mean it. To my fellow grad students, thank you for being a family to me. I've spent most of my time at Andrews with you guys. I know for a fact that I am the one who struggles most in our classes, but I've never felt intimidated and humiliated by any of you. Sitting with you guys in class always reminds me of how lucky I am to have this chance to study at Andrews. To the Filipino community present here tonight, friends from Berrien Springs, Kalamazoo, and others from Chicago, a lot of them, where am I? The Morton Grove Film Church family, are you guys here? Thank you so much for coming. They're actually sleeping here tonight. 
Thank you so much for being here. And to all of you who are here tonight, thank you for attending this year's Easter Tenor Bay concert and my graduate recital. And of course, to the HPAC management, Mrs. Lynetta Hamstra and her team, thank you for always ensuring that HPAC is ready to use for us all. Now, let me face the camera. This is for the people who can't come but are watching online. So where's the camera? Right there. <laughs> to my family back home, my mom, my dad, my two older brothers, my sister-in-law, I promise it's gonna be on minute. My sister-in-law and their kids, to all my mentors, to Professor Ramon Lihapi Jr. and the Philippine Meister Singers, Professor Cheryl Andedios, Chair of the AUP Music Department, my colleagues at the AUP Academy, my students and their parents, my beloved choir, the Sola Gracia Coral. I know all of you have been praying for me. Thank you so much for your support. To the Tumangdai family, thank you very much for allowing me to stay in your wonderful home, free of charge for this past two years. I can't thank God enough for such a huge blessing. He knows my needs, and he knows I can't afford to stay in the dormitory. So he led a stranger like me to the Tumangdai home. Thank you for welcoming me, Pete, Josh, Nick, Auntie Charity, and Uncle Sunny. My Auntie Ruthie, Auntie Lerma, Uncle Don, Uncle Joel, they are watching right now from California. Thank you for being so supportive in so many ways. I am so blessed to have a family here in the US. My Uncle Joel has been very influential in the path I am in right now, and he was my first music teacher and my first choir conductor. I spent so much time with him growing up. Last two phrases. Paragraphs. In my first three visits to the U.S. with my previous choir, the Philippine Meister Singers, I have met people who are now like parents to me. Auntie Melu, Uncle Jamie, Auntie Wilma and Uncle Dick, Auntie Arlene and Uncle Don, Auntie Irma, Kuya Richie, Kuya Homer, Kuya Todd and a lot more. Thank you so much for everything. God bless you all. From darkness into light, in one way or another, we are all on this journey together. I pray that we all continue to fix our eyes to our ultimate destination. And after this academic journey, hopefully next semester, I hope to meet you all again. If not anywhere here on earth, I hope it will be in that heavenly home that God has prepared for each one of us. Once again, thank you everyone and have a blessed Sabbath.
wonderful Sabbath and a wonderful Easter Sunday. I'll see some of you in church, I know. <laughs> Thank you very much.